Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going through Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the ultimate study guide. This is part three video. <laughs> My hand looks really weird in this light anyway. So yeah, we're going to dive straight in and get started. If you haven't seen part one or part two of this series yet, then please do check them out. In a nutshell, I've got this completely free study guide that you can see on my screen right now. All you need to do to go and get a copy of this for yourself is go to my website, which is gcseenglishexperts.com. You'll go onto the freebies section, go into the study guides, and that's gonna bring you to this page. I've got a growing list of study guides that I'm offering students totally for free. So you can see at the moment I've got five out. You might be studying these for your GCSEs. You can download them there and then you will end up on my legendary PDF file of everything you need to know about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. If you don't know who I am, my name's Adam. My job is to get you a bit better at English every single video. I've been teaching for over a decade and I've helped thousands of students to maximize their English GCSE and A-level results. It, it, it's what I live for, I love this stuff. So join the party, like, subscribe, share this with anyone that it might be useful for. With that all said, let's get into chapter five, incident of the letter. So what happens in this chapter? is Utterson visits Dr. Jekyll. He is deathly pale and ill, and he gives a letter to Mr. Utterson, supposedly from Mr. Hyde. Now we find out that actually the handwriting on the letter is pretty much Dr. Jekyll's handwriting. So Mr. Utterson is now worried that his friend Dr. Jekyll is actually forging fake letters for Mr. Hyde. And as we found out in the previous chapter, Mr. Hyde is now a murderer. So forging forging letters for a murderer, that would obviously make Dr. Jekyll also criminally involved in this. Dr. Jekyll has also changed a lot. So in earlier chapters, Dr. Jekyll kind of almost arrogantly says to Mr. Utterson, oh, I can control Mr. Hyde. There's no problem with Mr. Hyde. Even though Mr. Hyde has a will that says he's going to get all of Dr. Jekyll's stuff, even in the occurrence that Dr. Jekyll just disappears, which is very dodgy. I wouldn't sign a will like that. I'm sure you wouldn't either. But now he seems to understand the gravity of the situation a bit more. He says, I've had a lesson. Oh God, Utterson, what a lesson I have had. You've got the exclamatory phrases of Dr. Jekyll here, which shows how shaken and upset he is. Now, at this point, we still don't know that Dr. Jekyll is actually taking a potion to become Mr. Hyde, but we see that Mr. Hyde murdering Sir Danvers' crew has been a very big deal for him. So he's exclaiming, you've also got the hyphen in here. I've had a lesson hyphen. Oh God, Mr. Utterson, what a lesson I've had. The hyphen also creates a pause, which adds more tension and ultimately adds to the theme of this, which is his guilt is coming out and the consequences of his choices are starting to come out. Now, again, we don't, it's still part of the murder mystery. We still don't know that Dr. Jekyll is actually linked to Mr. Hyde like this. But at this point, we see there is a big change in Dr. Jekyll and he seems to be losing control of the situation. So in terms of context, we have Victorian London seeing a rise of what is called forensic evidence. And that's linked to investigating the characters through handwriting and other clues. So you have to understand, back in the 1800s, there was no forensic science that detectives and police forces could use to work out using like DNA and fingerprints and, and things like that to work out who had committed a crime. But we do see that Mr. Utterson takes Dr. Jekyll's letter and he analyzes it to find out that Dr. Jekyll seems to have been forging things, right? So we start to see the rise of that form of science here. And that would have been really interesting to the Victorian audience. So there's the level eight or level nine context that you could add to your GCSE essay as well. Cool, all right, so we're into chapter six, the remarkable incident of Dr. Lanyon. And this one is going back to this guy called Dr. Lanyon. So Dr. Lanyon was actually in the novel earlier. Mr. Utterson goes to see him to ask him if he'd ever met a guy called Mr. Hyde. And Dr. Lanyon says, no, I've never met this guy called Mr. Hyde. And at that time earlier in the book, Dr. Lanyon talks about how Dr. Jekyll was mixed up in unscientific border dash. So we get this sense that Dr. Lanyon and Jekyll have had this really big fight. And, but now we see Dr. Lanyon who earlier was still full of life and energy, he's really ill. He's like pale and ill and on his deathbed. And Mr. Utterson is trying to ask Dr. Lanyon a bit more about Dr. Jekyll. And Dr. Lanyon says, no, no, don't talk to me about Dr. Jekyll. Don't talk to me about someone I regard as dead. So the argument is very mysterious. And again, that creates a sense of 
what's happening here? Why is Dr. Lanyon not talking to Dr. Jekyll anymore? What has he seen or heard or what has happened? The major quote from this is, I wish to see or hear no more of Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Lanyon says this, it's an imperative phrase. So Dr. Lanyon is very serious about this. And we see that whatever argument they've had is bad enough that he doesn't want to talk to Dr. Jekyll ever again. So this all creates a foreboding hopefully that mystery of why Dr. Lanyon is so upset with Dr. Jekyll is going to come out in the novel later and obviously it does. It also links to science and its consequences because Dr. Lanyon is a medical doctor, scientist, he respects science and yet we get this sense that Dr. Jekyll has done something so unscientific and dangerous that Dr. Lanyon is scared and, and has had such a shock that it's actually killing him. Now it's quite sad really. So Dr. Lanyon does die and this all again links to the idea of the Victorians being very scared of the limits of science and the impact that might have on human beings, both in terms of their physical well-being and their moral well-being. So you can link it to any scientific discovery of the 1800s you want and the idea that the science fiction, the Victorians were very afraid. That would be some good context for this. So yeah, that's chapter five and chapter six. And all I would say is that in this, these middle sections, if this is what comes up in the exam, because obviously you get extracts from the exam, you will want to focus heavily on quotes like the ones I've been giving you, making sure you include techniques as you're analyzing them, and then trying to link it to Victorian context. Something I haven't talked about yet very much that I'd like to just finish this part with is about Robert Louis Stevenson himself. So he was dying of tuberculosis when he wrote Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And a lot of people don't know this. He wrote the novel in three days whilst he was on medicinal cocaine because at that time, cocaine was a medicine, a painkiller that people would be given if they were very ill and possibly dying. And at that time, tuberculosis didn't have a cure. So Robert Louis Stevenson knew that he was dying as he wrote this novel. And so then the death of Dr. Lanyon and the fact that Dr. Lanyon is so ill and at the end of his life, I think that's quite poignant or quite significant to link to Robert Louis Stevenson himself because he knew that he was dying and he knew he didn't have much time left. So that's the end of part three. I hope that was helpful. If you have enjoyed this, please do like and share and subscribe to my channel. Make sure other people are getting these free resources. They're right there for you. They're going to help you with your exams. I'll see you in the next one for chapter seven and eight.